take it. Normally, it's when they come in for a permit, they pay the impact fee, the builder pays the impact fee, and the, the, the city has it as each lot's taken down. Right. And as Tom noted, if we collect too much, then we have to square up. Yeah, it's worth it. Which I've never, I personally haven't heard of anyone and me that happening anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the law, but yeah. okay. typically, yeah. Yeah. The process to build stuff is a long process. So you, you, if you see something drastic like that happening, then sure you change the plan. Right? I was going to say to your point, Mark, mm -hmm. we would just immediately just go start this process again. And change the numerator. And, and to Andy's point, add in new capital investment projects that we didn't identify already or okay. Okay. change the change the numerator. Yeah. Okay. Normally that's all, if it's with the developer, it's going to be in a, develop, in a development agreement that's negotiated. Uh, now the other thing that didn't come up is Todd. My I didn't see the CIP list exactly, but um, I thought we talked before. Those big numbers, those millions of dollars, include the water lines on the developer's property, the lift stations on the developer's property. It's it's all the infrastructure on the developer's own land, along with stuff that's offsite. Mm -hmm. Whereas me, I've always, the developer would always pay for his own infrastructure. And the offsite stuff is the stuff that we're worried about, right? Correct. So that's why that number, does everybody understand? So when he calculated everything, it was as if, as if we had to pay for putting in land plans, water lines, and land plans, lift station, everything <coughs> land plan on our nickel. That's in that impact fee. But we're not doing that. If we have a developer, we're not paying for theirs. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we didn't pay to put your water line in your house. You did that. Your builder did that. We didn't. So that max number is a worst case doomsday scenario that we had to put in all the infrastructure. So they're going to get a credit for putting in their own lift stations, their own water lines, their own sewer lines, which will drop that number down. Okay? That makes sense? We're not, we're not going to pay. City so didn't pay to put your water line on your own property, right? Well, we did pay to put in the well over here. So that money, for the impact fee, is going to go to the offsite stuff, right? Right. Okay. And that typically, like the attorney was saying, it would be worked out in the development agreement because they are going to have some lift stations and, and some things that they're going to have to oversize. Um, the water lines are most likely going to be with NDP, but the wastewater and the forest main, it's on their land, but they're going to have to oversize it for people outside of there. And so that's where the engineers get together and come, okay, what what size do you really need to put in for your development? What's the difference in the cost? And that all gets worked out <coughs> in the development agreement. But, but those numbers, you shouldn't be fighting like 1.9, it's really not 1.9 million. That includes the stuff on their own land. It's, it's less than that, right? To expand the sewer plant, it's not 1.9 million, or whatever it was, that, that's not our half. It's, it's lower, okay? So, okay. Any other questions? All righty. Everybody good? The audience? Everybody, any questions? All right. Hopefully we'll wrap this up next month. Thanks, Tom. Sure. Thank you very much, Tom. We're Stuart. Okay. He, uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're getting to the end of the process now. Yeah. <laughs> Game night out. <laughs> it's Thursday night football. You can say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Oh, Todd, you have the well study. Okay. Sorry. Sure. Sorry. I thought you were getting out of here. <laughs> that was your I chance know. to say Stuart's got it. <laughs> yeah, right out the door. So all we did was we just put it on the agenda again. It's not a consideration item, just a discussion. It's for the I had a couple thing. of questions. I missed the meeting. OK. Um, so to summarize then, my way of thinking about this, we have two options for wells. One's a Paluxy, which is where our, other, our wells are now, about 1,500 feet roughly, which is our two wells here. Mm -hmm. And the other option is this Twin Forks or Twin Pines or whatever, which is the Trinity. Right. When I was at TML, some of the people were telling me about the Trinity. One of the problems was the water is, needs to be treated. It's not. It's got a lot of minerals, as they put in quotes. The other problem was they said it was hot. It was, it was the temperature. You had to actually cool it. But it was, it was, it was, it was 
hotter than your ambient water. Okay. And they were saying that was a problem. So you had to actually have cooling when you treated it. To, to, mm -hmm. But anyway, I just, that's what people have told me. The, so. well, the gel, gels did not bring that up, so I will ask them about that. I have not heard that about the temperatures. So I didn't think about temperature either, but they swore to me that was a problem. Was, now, they weren't in the Metroplex right here. Right. But, so basically, to summarize that, we have really good water that we can pump out and drink right now at 1,500 feet. The problem is, it doesn't put out too many gallons a minute. The crappy water down below, there's a ton of it deeper, right. but it's crappy water, but it pumps a lot. Right. It would be basically so right, at the, the two right, right at the threshold for TCQ, or we could expect that based on other wells in the area. Sorry, what was the first? It, it, could, it would be right at the threshold of the TCEQ water quality um, yeah. regulations. Based on, that's what we can expect. Yeah. You know, you never know until you, you go down there, but based on other wells in the area, that's. That's everything yeah. I've heard about the Trinity too. Yeah. Right. The amount of water, though, we do have that other variable, we can correct it with storage. Right. So, I mean, my impression was that, that the water quality is, is key. Right. Having a lot of unusable water is not helpful. Yeah, I, I, it, it's going to be an interesting when we really get into it to the point when we have to drill a well and really get into do we want to do that treatment, you know, if we have water temperature, or do we want to do storage and then manage our seasonal differences with storage by taking a tank offline, managing the nights. You know. No, I think that's. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be interesting because you know, to me, that's. No, no, it's quite, it's a, the, quite the dilemma. It's an interesting trade off, yeah, right? It's, it's never be, simple. <laughs> be a good but, but I don't want to have, uh, yeah, I just, you know, less moving parts for us, the better, right? Yeah. Okay. And so that was kind of my summary of what I thought the trade offs were, right? Right. I think that was a good summary. I think with the, the amount of demand we're proposing right now, I think the pool oxy would get you what you need. Um, like Clint said, we could manage the peaks with uh, just more storage. And the other thing Todd and I talked about too is that, that geologists can be really conservative. Sure. So he's going to be under, more likely he's always going to be under on what, the, what, what he thinks the well will produce. Right. So if we're going to, if we're gambling. <laughs> well, we also know that's a flexi over here. Right. right. So we got another flexi there at Little Elm. And I don't know what Aqua Texas was. <coughs> we know? Flexi. I thought it was the flexi in Aqua Texas too. <laughs> So we're surrounded by Paluxy, so I mean, it seems like that's that, the that's mixing the, purpose. That's, that's, the, yeah, for us. that's the other reason for not to go to a Paluxy. We have a bunch of wells that are already tapped into right. that are here on, so yeah. it's, it'll be a good discussion. There's also talk of putting in an emergency interconnect with yeah. Little Well to get you through some sort of that's true too. heat headache or yeah. catastrophic event. Yeah, they're yeah. on surface water. So that's <laughs> another consideration too is that with the groundwater district, we may only get one shot, we may only get one permit. Same question before. Uh, this is the same one, same report that we reviewed a month ago. Yes. Okay, so nothing, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. I'll go. I'll ask about the water temperature. Um, they didn't bring that up to me. Uh, it wasn't mentioned in the report. So yeah, I asked Linda to put it on the agenda, knowing that Todd would be here. So if there was anybody that had yeah. another month to think about it, wanted to ask questions, we could. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Are you good? All right. You're dismissed now. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, 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 Todd. Thanks for coming out. Thanks. All right. Next up, we have a series of ordinances. Uh, basically, what these ordinances are is that we need to, uh, our ordinances have in them the fact that our ordinances apply in the extraterritorial jurisdiction um, uh, following uh, the court ruling. Uh, cities can't extend their building codes of ATJ. We, we can't do that now. So we just have to make a revision to revising in a couple places in the ordinances. It's only, you know, it's the caption at the top. Yeah, the where at is really. Yeah, it's basically the caption at the top which says where the ordinance applies. So we're striking the words ETJ out of that. All the building codes, everything is identical. We're not changing any building codes. Just only the enforcement area. Just, just the area where it applies. And um, so we need to do that. So it's a series of Basically, all of our building and lighting ordinances, um, just changing those, those, those two words, extra three words, exterior and Okay? I just got one question. Yeah. Did you do the editing in this? I'm oh, sorry? Were you the one who edited it? Yeah. Okay. 
So the, um, the, the blue edits, those are all the ones given to the ETJ. Those other edits that are on there, those are sold. Is that those ones? They, they look like they were from a prior version or something. I give her some areas that mine were crossed out, but I'm assuming that was there prior to whatever you did, right? I'm just, I guess my question um, is nothing else changed. You just pulled So the, the only edits, I think I know what you're talking about. The only edits are blue. Throughout blue the document, if you see anything that's in black that's underlined or striked, that's actually revising the code itself, the international code. Okay. But we the only edits that were the no. only edits we're discussing tonight are in blue. Perfect. So, yeah. Okay. So again, we're not changing any of the Substantive in the text. It's just the application. Do you have questions? Have questions? No. Okay. okay. So I'd like to just kind of roll through these um, if we're ready. Can we have one? Can we have a one? Andy, Andy frowns. We do a lot of ones. Can we do items 379? I'll say it. Yeah, yeah. Do what? I think it'd be better if you said it was separate. Okay. I motion to approve or motion to approve the residential code as amended. Okay, I have a motion. A second by Ray. All those in favor? Thank you. Next up, agenda item four, plumbing code. Same. What it is? Clint is full. Motion to approve the plumbing code as amended uh, to remove the ETJs as an enforcement area. Same. I have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Thank you. Next up, the chemical code. All right. Motion to approve the mechanical code as amended to Motion a second, all in favor? Very good. Consideration of the fuel and gas code ordinance. All right, motion to approve the fuel and gas uh, ordinance uh, as amended to remove the ETJ as a fourth Motion a second, all in favor? Thank you. All right, consideration of the fire code ordinance. Motion to approve the fire code ordinance as, moved, as amended to remove the ETJ as a fourth Motion a second, all in favor? Consideration of Energy Conservation Code. All right. Motion to approve the Energy Conservation Code as amended to remove the ETJ as enforcement area. Motion second. All those in favor? There we go. Okay, there we go. Please don't carry raises, watch out. Okay, uh, next up, the Electrical Code. All right. Uh, motion to approve the Electrical Code as amended to remove the ETJ as enforcement area. Motion to second. All those in favor? Okay, thank you very much, guys. That's, uh, that was important that we got that. Okay. Very good. Works ahead when I need them. See, I can do things carefully. All right, next up, item number 10 is consideration of resolution for town attorney opinions. So, this was a resolution that I asked Linda to kind of work out. The idea being that we wanted to have, uh, give Andy some direction on what to do when we request official opinions on the issue, the tension, if you will, in the kind of model is we don't want to discourage council members from asking opinions of the attorney, but we also don't want to have attorney opinions floating around the universe that are confidential. So there's this tension between maintaining confidentiality and, and limiting things running around which are confidential between the attorney and client. I was going to say confidentiality between attorney and client. Right, and then having the council, because Andy represents the city, we are all one. He doesn't work for me. He doesn't give opinions to me. He gives opinions to the city council. But that's the way that it works. I'm the client, Dan's the client, we're all the clients, Clint's the client. So it's giving direction to that, while at the same time maintaining some sort of records, documentations, Linda has to maintain for public information and she has to maintain records. So we have to have kind of those those three tensions going on. That if I ask him for an opinion, it comes back to me. Linda's the one that's in charge of records. She has to know about it for records maintenance. So I asked Linda to basically come up with a uh, with a, with a policy. So what do you want to go I I I said it for well, Hey, come on, I'm not used to driving. You let me say all well without doing anything, okay. Yeah, you're not even sure. You're screaming out the flip phone. PowerPoint didn't they? Oh, I got a motion, I think. Yeah, okay. All right, 
that's uh, this is the this is the ordinance. I think everybody can see it. Um, just another word. So basically, Lenny, why don't you take it? Uh, it's it's just very basic and straightforward. Anybody on the council requesting an attorney um, opinion from Andy makes the request. Andy's going to answer and reply to me. I'll maintain them all in my office, and as soon as I get um, the opinion from Andy, I'll notify all everybody on the council that there's one um, in the office. You can see it in there. And that way we don't have to worry about a bunch of emails and somebody accidentally disclosing something. Yeah, some of the some of the attorney stuff is not only attorney client, it's legally confidential. So if a developer gives us information, hey I'd like to build this or I'd like to think about doing that, and I send Andy and say, look, here's some plans about what the developer's trying to do, what do you think? Those plans are confidential under state law. You, know, you, you, I can't, you can't even get a public information request yet. We tried to get the well information from the North Texas groundwater just to know what wells are in our neighborhood. They said you can't get it, we won't tell you. They wouldn't tell us how deep it is, they said that's proprietary. They put in the, the person that paid for those wells to put them in, that's their information. It's confidential. They have the documents, but they won't give them to us. Because business related stuff, economic development stuff is confidential by law. Am I saying that right, Andy? Yeah. So it, it's not even that I don't want Andy or you know you to know about it because it's me and Andy talking. It's legally, if it got out, that's a violation of state law. Okay? Even if it's innocent, like it's no big deal. I, I don't care if you know about it. We can't release it. It's not allowed. Okay? So that's why this intermingling between some stuff is legally confidential that it can't be released, and other things are confidential because of attorney client that it's confidential that way. Okay. So let's discuss the stuff that's not confidential. It could be a majority of what we discuss. And I guess I'm going to address this to you. If we ask you a, an opinion which you're going to give us an effect law that's not confidential, could that affect the law? Why, why would we want to keep that from our taxpayers? Well, if you ask me an opinion, depending on what it is, most times that's going to be attorney client communication that is privileged. Because you're the client, I'm the attorney, I'm giving you a legal opinion on whatever the circumstance is. So right, the, many times that's going to be privileged communication. So the, the client is us. If the client chose to disclose that, is there any is there any concern on your side? I mean, is there just to make sure that to make sure that everybody understands yeah. the attorney client privilege, like it's to protect the client. Is that correct? Or is yeah, it also the client owns the privilege? Client owns the privilege. So if, if um you know if, if we go and ask a question about a, what does this law mean to us? Factors to it. And we decide to disclose that. Yeah. yeah. Um, a, how would we decide that? Because we're, we're passing an ordinance that says everything's confidential. Taxpayers may not know what we're saying. How would we make a decision to say this is I don't think that's what it says. Option number three there says that in order to maintain confidentiality as required by law, that's which, by which law. is the thing right. I want to ask, uh, the opinions of the attorney shall only be available for review in the common hall. And they can only be available to review from the people sitting here. So how, how would we disclose a normal question of law? Yeah. Um, or an issue, yeah, or privilege communication. No, 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 a, a statement fact. I, I get, hey, if we've got a problem on our hands, we're trying to figure it out, yeah. and there's, you know, uh, privileged information in there that you can't see, I get that. Yeah. I'm talking about the ones that aren't that. I'm talking about the statement of facts, simple questions, those types of things that are, you know, that we're asking you. How, if, if we enforce, if we do this, how do we ever, how do we disclose that to our taxpayers? Well, I don't, I don't want to mix up apples and oranges. If there's something that's confidential, that that confidential confidentiality between attorney and client can be waived by the client. Yep. The better way that that is waived is if the council collectively voted and said, we're going to release this to the public. So that way the client, the body politics, knowingly waives confidential matter. And that makes sense. Yeah. 
So, so the body makes a, makes a motion. So the concern comes in is, if every time we, we ask you a question, right. and everyone that comes back to us goes back to Linda, because I'm reading this that, you know, if, if Clint or anybody goes to you, everything you're gonna come back to us with an opinion or statement of fact is gonna come through no, this process. No, it's only if you request an official opinion from Andy. If I call Andy on the phone and say, look, Andy approves our agenda. If I call Andy and say, Andy, you know, are you okay with the wording if I do this or do this? It's not general questions, it's not operating questions. It's if you say, I want to get a legal opinion from Andy, a written legal opinion that, that we're going to use to say whether or not we can do A or B. It's not every communication we really have with Andy. It's, it's an official opinion letter from Andy. If you said, Andy, I want you to write an opinion. So at least my concern, Dan, is. Well, obviously, so my, my question to Dan again is an official opinion that is clearly a statement of fact which has no confidentiality. Well, then why are you asking? Because if, if we pass this thing, it tells you that we would need to vote to give the taxpayers information they should have. And I have a concern with that. Now, I, I get if you say it's confidential, we've got to make confidential, I get that. And if you want to waive it, we got to vote. I, I get that. But if this information is not confidential, yeah. where do we have a right to keep it from the people? I don't get that. Well, if <clears throat> I don't know, I don't know what. If I'm giving an opinion and then deals with underlying facts, say for example, a plat. Plat's going to be public information. If it's if it's filed a record, that's public information, right? Yeah. But if somebody's if if somebody is asking me to give an opinion on the legality of that plat or the passing of that plat, um, that could be different. To me, I don't care if the plat's provided or not. My opinion about it, I do care about. That's how. So I would, I would parse that. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I get that. Right. So if it's confidential, keep it confidential, and only vote to waive it by voting it. Right. Um, I'll say that again. Yeah. So if it's confidential data in that opinion, yeah. and even if the asking of it is a confidential thing, then then vote to release it. Right. It's up to y'all. If you yeah. want it to, be, if you if you, know, you, you want to release it at that vote, or you vote yeah. not to release it. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so two things. How would you? Let's go back to the thing that drove this, right? You, you and I had a conversation about a, you know, ethics, right? We, we took a look at a bunch of towns that are around here, and we said, hey, here's policies that are out there, and we had a conversation about how could we, you know, establish some guideline ethical things for the town council. You and I went back and forth and then we came up with that. So using that example, there's nothing confidential in that. I mean, restating the existing Texas law is not confidential information. But then, yeah, Dan, no, you, that's not accurate. No, okay, any, well, any, communi right any communication between me and any council member, it can be confidential. It's just because yeah. it's attorney-client communication and you're asking a legal opinion. Perfect. So, what, so that means that every time we ask an opinion, it's automatically confidential. Well, that's not why I understand this. Well, what I understand this is, is that that it's, a, it, it, it's asking some a council person is asking me to give a written opinion on something, not so, necessarily. And why why I understand this is it doesn't deal with. It doesn't say that though. Okay, well maybe that's that needs to be clarified. Yeah, I'm good with that. So it says there are all requests. So if I see you out in the parking lot and I say, hey, I've got a question for you. Can you give an opinion on this? Can you give it to me? That's a request for official opinion. Be a, that would be a, 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 Dan, here's, here's what we're trying to parse out, Dan. I, I, I don't know. I'm asking y'all for direction on how you want me to deal with there's, it. There's, Dan, so let me, let me say where we're going with this. Okay, so it makes no sense to ask Andy an opinion about something which is a straight fact of law. Asking Andy, you know, does the city council have six members or four members? Something that's a no-brainer, trivial, you know, simple thing, like an asking him to write an opinion on that, yeah, we could release that because it's it's pointless. It was it was something you could read in the local government code. For order him to give an opinion on something. Now, suppose I say, Andy, we're thinking about using eminent domain to acquire some land in front of the town entrance so we can make the thing. How would we go about that or whatever? Clearly that's confidential. We would not want that telegraphed. We're thinking about no, using eminent domain. We're thinking about you can't say you wouldn't want that telegraph. You may not want 
contract. We would not, you, you don't negotiate, you, you've got to figure out your options when you're talking about real property, and you do that confidentially. All I wanted to ask was how could we, if we pass this ordinance, and it says all, re oh, I'm sorry, you're thinking this, all requests are immediately confidential, which I'm, I'm not necessarily going to, but it says all, all requests for official opinions. My question is, how do we release them? Your answer was we need to vote on it. And all that would be the best way. That would be the best way, and I'll vote with the best way. Uh, so the question is, how would we even say that? Like, hey, I want to have a vote to release the confidential information? Or how, what's the, like, how would you even go about doing that? How would you vote? Yeah, like how would, you, how would you put that on the agenda? Yeah, so how I would do that is, or what I would recommend doing is if you put an executive session for attorney-client communication about whatever Absolutely. the topic is, you meet an executive session, you talk about it, and if, it, if, if it's something that y'all want to vote on, you come out of executive session, and somebody makes a motion to, dis, to disclose this information to the public, second, all in favor, and if it passes, then it would be disclosed. If it doesn't pass, it remains confidential. Yeah, but by, but by default, everything we do is going to be confidential at this point. Well, why don't are you I'm asking for this from the board right here to be written? Would that be a better clarification? But to be official? Well, no, I said here's the problem. If we go with, if we go with written, yeah. then the problem is I could ask for a verbal form. I mean, I could ask for, I mean, if, you know, I mean, right. it, so I, mean, I think all that, I think all encompassing that way. Right? Yeah, but we, we do verbal ones. The concern, if you do it orally, that's not a concern about confidential information running around. There's an email out there saying, we're going to try and acquire this piece of land for a well. You know, or we're looking to acquire this, or we're looking to do, um, you know, this developer wants to know if we'd be willing to do two houses per acre, if they'll give us a million dollars to put in a park. I mean, th there's information out there that, yeah, if, I, if you do it poorly, I don't have a problem with that, because there's no, there's no problem with that being disseminated outside the, the envelope. You're on your own to not do that. But that's the way we operate now, right? We're under the honor code now. Right? Well, we, we would have been under the honor code, now we're gonna put a, put a provision on that. I don't know, I gotta say, I'm, I'm not comfortable with um, no, keeping just, information from the taxpayers. Just I'm just not comfortable with that. We're just talking to circles here. So I mean, unless there's any new information or somebody wants to. Do we, do we want to add the word written opinion here? Is that? My concern is with the emails. That's my concern right. is about having, and I know Andy is, Andy, when he gives us an opinion. Easily to disseminate material, right? Well, Andy, I mean, it's, it's fair for Andy to write an opinion. If he's writing it to me, I, it's not right for me to then disseminate that. To, he didn't write it to the others. It's like being an author of, of, of a work. So I don't, if I write a letter to you, I'm not writing it to 27 other people. You don't get to CC that. And, so, I mean, that's the problem is, you know, we need to be able to make sure that it's, we're square up. If Andy's conversing, that that doesn't get out in the universe without him knowing about it. And it's also, it becomes available to everyone, and it's, it's a controlled source. I mean, it's your opinion, all right? Yeah, but the, the confidentiality is going to the confidentiality is with the town. And I think that's why we asked the question again to establish that. So it's, it's not your call to remain in confidentiality, but we're not here to protect you. Um, you're good. It's, it's us. So, and then again, what I was question is, under what circumstances would the town need to keep the stuff from the people? And I get certain things, making deals, you're going to acquire a piece of property, you know, I get that. This is very all-encompassing. And I would, I would warn of the dangers of having everything be confidential that people don't know about. Andy, is your concern, okay, so it's one thing for you to say that the city council can decide we have the authority to release any opinion you've read. We do, we have that authority. Right. The question is then, scratch that, what do you want? Are you comfortable with us? Would you rather have us ask you? To me, I, I, I would ask you and say, Andy, there's something on the agenda about potentially releasing your opinion about X. What do you think? Yeah. Do you want your name associated with this floating around the universe, or? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back anything I put in right. I'm going to stand behind it. But it doesn't mean everything I say is open to the public. Um, it also I, I, I mean, I, our office gets a volume of phone calls from mayors and council members every day about a lot of different topics. 
we give opinions about a lot of things every single day. Sometimes we give opinions by email, sometimes we give written memorandum opinions. So um, I, think, I think it'd be fair to say if a council member or mayor calls me, I think you're probably gonna keep that confidential, but you're not gonna call me unless you really wanna know the answer to something that's pressing. If you want something in email, it's gonna be more important than something that's on the phone. And I would normally think you'd keep that confidential. But that's up to you. If it's a, a, a written opinion, cities deal with that differently. Some of the cities that I represent, if I give an opinion to one council person, then normally that, will, that same opinion will go to the mayor and maybe the mayor pro tem. And in this instance, you're saying, well, it should go to all council members just so that everybody knows what's happening. Yeah. I mean, that's just a, that's a matter of your individual policy. There's not a set way to do that. But most of the time, if you're asking for my opinion, it's probably going to be on something that's more sensitive. It's not going to be something that's necessarily public. But you're going to do use that opinion to make a decision about something, some public item. But it's again, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. Normally, I'm going to counsel you to, if, if it's something you're asking my opinion or you want my work product on or my research, I want you to keep that confidential. That would normally be my recommendation. But it's your it's your call if you want to disseminate that to the public, but it's your call collectively. Okay, because I, I think of normally facts of law, we, we send it to TML. Yeah, for I've instance, I've, I've got a question about, um, it, it, it dealt with uh, regulating, I think, uh, the road. We changed, I don't know what section of transportation code it's in. I'm not going to ask Anna, write TML, and say, look, I, I, where in this section of the transportation code does it say we can regulate four wheelers on the street? Tell me where, where do I go? And their lawyers will tell me, you know, it's in section whatever. We use TML for kind of the no-brainers. I, I want to use your brain power. We pay it for you right. when it's something which is a grayer, something where we need actual guidance. Um, I, I don't want to use you for no-brainers. That, that's why, to me, by definition, when you're in the loop, it's important. Right. And, and with all the developer work that we've got going on, and, and a lot of it right now, and cities and agreements, things that we're trying to work out, the school board, and, and there's just lots of stuff where we can't, that information can't be disseminated right now. It's not right, it's not ready yet. There's too many moving parts. Can I just clarify, this, this document isn't creating and making things confidential. It's acknowledging the confidentiality that already exists. Yeah, it's, it's not the way it's written. It could have been written that way, but it, does not, it doesn't say that. If you read it. So um, again, we're just going in circles. We're saying the same thing. So I mean, I, I agree with Ray. I don't have any trouble with it. Ray or Gary. Do you want to, you want to add anything or clarify I'm anything globally? I mean, I would caution bringing this in today only because I would say the few times I've gone to you, Andy, I guess three, every one of those came from a citizen. 